All right, so you like Desmos and your students are doing Desmos, but you wanna provide some sort of immediate student feedback. And, and uh, this video is gonna show you the easiest way to start um, creating self-checking screens so that your students will know immediately if they've got the answer correct or not. All right, so let's get started. So I'm logged into Desmos. And what I'm gonna do is, whoa, I gotta do something over here. Okay, so I'm going to click new activity and I'm gonna create super easy self checking. All right, so we're gonna name that activity. I'm gonna cr click create new activity. And you'll notice I've got a palette of things over here. And right now I have one slide which is currently blank. Okay, so the easiest, super easy way to uh, create self-checking is I'm going to pull over three of these components. I'm going to pull over a sketch, I'm going to pull over a note, and then I'm going to pull over a math input. And you'll notice Desmos is kind of uh, controlling the layout. I don't get much flexibility. I can put these components anywhere I want, but it's really uh, Desmos is constraining me as to where I want my, or where I'm al allowed to place my components. Uh, so I've got these three components and I'm gonna name them. I'm gonna name this one sketch. I'm gonna name the note. I'm gonna name it problem. And down here, the math input, I'm gonna name it student input. Technically, I can name these anything I want. I just have to remember what I've named them. All right, so if I want to at any time see what's going on, I just hit preview and there it is. Here's my sketch right here. There's my math input and squeezed up here is the note, but because there's no content, here is the note. It was blank, but when I hit preview, I can now see it. Now this is static. There's nothing here going on. Uh, nothing is happening right yet in terms of self-checking. So uh, I'm gonna leave that here as the note. When we're ready to start programming our little self-checking, all I have to do in the note, in the problem section, the component, which was a note, I'm gonna click on this little button right here to edit the computation layer. And uh, it is really crazy easy. I need something for the question, all right? So I'll put uh, the question goes here. <laughs> there, the question goes here. I need to tell it the answer. So I'll, I'll put, oh, um, 72. Actually, I'm gonna just do quotations right here to leave it blank. And actually I can do 72 like that, okay? And then uh, I'm gonna put the feedback and I need some sort of feedback here, some sort of feedback right here. So there's the three things, the question, the answer, and the feedback that I want to give. And then the last thing I need to do is tell Desmos to put all of this on the screen. And so that's using the word content. And that's a sync, meaning it's gonna insert all of this information onto the screen that the students are gonna read. So I'm gonna click that screen, uh, that sync, just to make it go a little faster. And the content. So what I'm gonna do is I want the content on the screen to have the question and the feedback, all right? Feedback. Now, when I click done, this current text right here is gonna be overwritten by whatever the, the computation layer says. So when I hit preview, wha-bam, this question feedback shows up here. Why is that question feedback showing up? Because in the content language, I said, type in, put in the question, put in the word feedback. Because right now, these are static, question feedback. I need to insert not the the word question and the word feedback, but I wanna insert the variables. So what I need to do is to turn that question into a variable. I'm gonna do a dollar sign, bracket, bracket. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with feedback. Dollar sign, bracket, bracket. And I now have content. So what the content is gonna go onto the screen is whatever this variable is for question and whatever this variable is for the feedback. So 
look at the question. The question goes here, look at the feedback, some sort of feedback. When I hit done and preview, there it is. The question goes here, some sort of feedback. All right. Uh, there is a nice, beautiful little code for new line, which is slash. It's a backward slash. So it's not the division symbol, not the division symbol, but the backward slash N, which makes it into a new line. So this says the question goes here, carriage return, and then some sort of feedback. So watch what happens now. I hit preview. Ah, look at that, two lines. The question goes here, there was a carriage return, and then some sort of feedback. All right, so now we're starting to look good. But the problem is I don't want the question goes here. Let's do an actual question. Let's do simplify. Um, let's do 29 plus 43. Now the answer is 72. Okay. Now what I actually need to do is change this to a numeric value and then question, uh, quotation, quotation, 72. All right. That's what I want right there. So now it is taking that this inside stuff and turning it in into a number, which is in this case, 72, all right? Now, the feedback, there's gonna be two conditions. When it's correct, I want you to say something. When it's wrong, I want you to say something. And then otherwise, otherwise, I want you to say nothing at all. So I just do quotation, quotation. So you'll notice it. my feedback always has these three conditions. When it's correct, you're gonna say something. When it's wrong, you're gonna say something else. Otherwise, you're gonna stay blank, all right? So now when it's correct, let's say, awesome. When it's wrong, say try again otherwise stay blank. Now you'll notice it's giving me an error. Well, that's because I don't really want to say correct. Correct isn't a real term in Desmos language. So, but I wanted to give you a sense of the structure. Feedback is, there's your equal sign, is, when it's correct, I want you to say awesome. When it's wrong, I want you to say try again. Otherwise, leave it blank. There's your quota double quotations right next to each other. Now let's put in the correct coding right here. So, when it's correct, I'm gonna hit done, and I'm gonna hit refresh, because it's gonna be mad at me for some reason. All right, now, when it's correct, oh, I need to go, go back to done. So, I need to look at this component down here. This is the student input, all right? So that's gonna be the key. So, when the student input, and I'm gonna put dot has been submitted, and <laughs> when the student input dot numeric value is equal to answer, all right? So when it's submitted and when its value is equal to 72, when its value is equal to the answer, I want you to say, yay, awesome. Now, when it's wrong, now, how do you say when it's wrong? So when it's wrong, it's student input is submitted and that's it. We don't also include that it's equal to the answer. Now, if we wanted to, well, so we just say try again. All right. Otherwise, it's going to be blank. Now, if I want, well, let's just say done. So I'm going to hit preview. Here you go. Simplify 29 plus 43, the answer is 72. So I haven't hit submit yet. So when I type in and when I hit the submit button, we're gonna satisfy those two requirements. It's submitted and it's the correct answer. Well, bam, I've submit, I've satisfied those two requirements and it now says awesome. If I wanna go back and say 70, and when I hit submit, it says try again. Why? Because I only satisfied one of those two criteria. It is submitted, but it's not equal to the answer. Now, if I want, I can go in here and I could be super explicit. I could say, and 
And then I could do not, which is a function. And inside, I can say student input numeric value is equal to answer. All right. So this is now saying when it's correct. So this is what it looks like when it's correct. It's submitted and the answer, the, the numeric value of the input is equal to answer. The answer is, uh, the feedback is awesome. However, when it's wrong, now what do I say if I want to explicitly be wrong? It's submitted and the answer is not equal, all right, to the answer. When I hit done and hit preview, when I type in 70, it's going to give me try again because now it's, it's, I've satisfied the two criteria for being wrong. Oops, right here. The two criteria for being wrong and here's the two criteria for being right. And that is it. And, and that is so, so stinking simple. So there's your answer. So now all I have to do, if I want to change that problem, I can change that problem to 30 plus 47 or yeah, 47. And now the answer of course is 77. So down here, I just need to change it to 77. And when I hit done and hit preview, I now get a new problem that's still providing me some feedback. Uh, so if I want multiple problems, all I have to do is up here, I'm gonna do edit, copy that slide, and then do edit, paste, and edit, paste, and edit, paste. And so now I have four problems. So all I have to do is edit each one of those. So there's that problem. And I'll go into problem, or slide two, and I can edit that to be 13 plus uh, 12. Change the value of 25. Problem three, insert or edit the code, and I can make this a plus six. And of course, the answer is 15. You always have to remember to change that. 15. And then I'll let this last problem insert, edit the code, and then do uh, three plus five, and of course, change that to eight. And now I have, as I preview, I now have slide one, slide two, slide three, and each one of these is now self checking using that same code. All right, super, super easy. Now, what if, oops, remove. I want to, now here's slide five with fractions. Okay, so what if I wanna change this to make it fractions? I could say, well, let's make this two thirds plus two thirds. And of course the answer is four thirds. So all I have to do is type in four divided by three. And there's your answer. And so when I hit preview on this slide, all I have to do is type in four thirds, hit submit, whoa, bam, it is going to uh, say awesome. All right. Now you'll notice it gave me some evaluation over here. If I want to turn that off, so, oh, by the way, four thirds, I could also do one and one third and hit submit. Well, bam, it's awesome. And it works, right? So it's really, really, really cool. Now, but if I want, I'm gonna, we'll talk about that evaluation in a second. But this doesn't look like fractions. We don't like that. So we wanna make it into something that actually looks like fractions. So I'm gonna go over here and all I have to do is do a tick mark and a tick mark. And that's going to say, hey, this inside stuff is latex or LaTeX or whatever, LaTeX, however you want to pronounce it. And oh, look at that. It's a little bit different, isn't it? It still doesn't quite look like fractions. So all I have to do is up here for that two thirds, all I have to do is back, uh, backslash frac bracket, 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 like that. And I'm gonna insert a two here and insert a three here, and I don't need that anymore. So that is how you indicate a fraction, the fraction two thirds. So if I want another fraction of two thirds, I just copy that and paste it in right here. And so now when I hit done and hit preview, whoop, bam, it looks like a fraction. I'm gonna type in four thirds, I hit submit, I'm awesome, it's correct. I can do my work over here. And that is how you do some super, 
easy self-checking. In a future video, I'll talk about how you get rid of this um, evaluation thing.